You can use tables and arrays in PD to store numbers. Tables and arrays are essentially the same thing, tables being an array stored in a subpatch, an array being a graphical display of a table on the canvas. Let's create a table, Command-1, type a table and its name. We'll call ours Pitches. Now you can click on this when locked and you'll get a graphical representation of Pitches. To write to this table, we'll use tab write, T-A-B-W-R-I-T-E, and then type the name of the table, pitches. The rightmost inlet is the index to write to, and the left inlet is the value to write. So we'll create 0 for the index, so that's our first index, and a number atom for the value. So we'll prepare the index by banging the right inlet, and then we'll send a value. Take a look at table pitches, and you see that one has been written. Let me shift drag this particular slider, and we take a look again, and we see that now point 0.9 has been written. If I change the index, let's say to index 3, Now, slide, we see that at index 3, the value has been written. An array is essentially the same thing. We'll create one by choosing put array. Let's call this array pitches underscore 2. And here, we'll choose to draw as points instead of a polygon, which is the way the table's being uh, drawn. And when you create this, you might have to slide it to get the name to appear. We can write to this array the same way we wrote to our table. Instead of writing to tab write pitches, we'll write tab write pitches underscore two. First send the index to write to, then write the amount. You can also write to tables and arrays by using messages. So what you do is create a message box, type a semicolon, hit return, then type the name of the table or array you want to write to. So we'll choose pitches 2. The next value is the index you want to start at, so let's say index 5. And the values after this are all of the values that you're going to write. So it'll write at index 5, then index 6, 7, etc. So we'll do 0 0.2, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.3, 0 0.6. You don't have to connect this to any particular object. This message box will automatically send the information to the table. And you see now it's been written to pitches 2. And as well, we can write this information to pitches table, we take a look at it, and there it is. So when we come back, we'll take a look at reading the table. We can read values from a table or an array by using tab read. Option 1, tab read, and the name of the table to read from, so pitches underscore 2. The inlet will accept the index, and the outlet will spit out the value at the index received. I'm going to change the properties of this particular inlet to have a lower limit of 0 and an upper limit of 5. Now as I slide the mouse up, I get the values at each of these indexes. Let me go ahead and send new values to this particular array. So starting from the beginning at index 0, I'll send a 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 6, 7, 8. Then click the message, and you see now that it's been redrawn. And as I read the table, I get the values. So one way to meaningfully use this is as a sequencer. You'll store your pitches in the table as 
or the array rather, as the array suggests, and then feed to make note. Now, obviously, if we feed decimals to make note, we're not going to get results, so we'll need to use some sort of scaling. So, we'll multiply by 10, space, okay, and get the result. Check the values. Okay, now we can take that and add. Let's say we start at 60. So this is an offset. And the result here will give us notes starting at MIDI note 60 and then going up. I've got my FM7 in the background, and as I move in through this table, and of course the notes are overlapping because I've got the duration argument set to a full second. I wanted to go a little bit further with this and read this as a sequence. We could create a metro, let's say at 250 milliseconds. We'll use cup to count upwards. And then we'll use a modulo. And the modulo here will be the total number of values that we have. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So modulo five. Connect that to the cup. And now what's going to happen is we will cycle through the table. And we'll create a toggle to start. One last thing actually before we start is that the metro is moving quite fast, so we want to make sure the duration of the notes is not longer than the metro speed, because we don't want the notes to overlap. Let's make it 230. And start. <laughs> Okay, so now what we can do is we can copy this message and we'll write different notes. Now we're using decimals, so uh, we'll, we'll look at using actual MIDI numbers another time. We're using decimals because we haven't gone over how to resize the array, um, because if we put in whole numbers larger than one, the spikes in the, in the array would go beyond the bounds, but we'll look at resizing here in a bit. But for now, let's just change the values. Okay, so now what I could do is I could switch between banging these two messages. And I could also use the mouse to draw new values. Uh, there we go. So that's a really quick way to use an array or a table, remember a table is just an array essentially in a sub patch, to store numbers and then read back the numbers using tab read, to quickly write sets of numbers, uh, contiguous sets of numbers using message boxes, and then to create a very simple sequencing mechanism to read through the numbers. When we come back we'll take a look at different arguments you can send to an array or a table to resize, add ticks, or do 
other things that will give you a more meaningful visual output. You can send different messages to tables or arrays to change their appearance. We'll send a resize message to change the total width, so colon, hard return, the name of the, the array, and then the total number of indexes, which is six. And you remember that you don't have to attach these messages to anything. Just click on them, and they'll go, oh, we forgot to do one critical thing, which is resize, and then six. OK, I'll copy this message and use it as the foundation for our other messages. The next thing we'll do is change the bounds of the array window. So type bounds. And now there are four values, the leftmost value, the topmost value. If you look at our values, you see 0.9 is the highest. So actually, this particular array has a top value of 1. Uh, just for illustration, we'll choose 2 as the topmost value. The rightmost value, which is the total number of indexes, minus 1 which is 5, and the bottommost value, let's say negative 2. Lock the patcher and test it out. Okay, so let's actually change it so that our topmost bounds is 1, our rightmost is 5, and our bottommost is 0. Okay, we can add ticks to each of the axes. So to add ticks to the x-axis, we'll type x ticks space where we want to start which is 0 the interval between ticks so let's say 0.5 and then how many ticks it takes to get a larger tick so 4 so every 4 ticks you get a larger tick let's change it to 2 alright and as well we can do this on the y-axis change it to y ticks since the top value is 1, it would make sense to have ticks that are 0.25 apart. We'll make all of them large. And if we wanted to, we could do 0.125. And then say every other. And we can add labels to the x and y axis. And actually, before we do this, let's move that down. And instead of x ticks, y ticks, we'll choose x label. x label. And where we'd like to start on the x axis, which is 0, and then the labels. And it will automatically place them. So since we have six indexes, we'll say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's six values. And then this first value is actually the y. So let's say negative point. Five. Actually, it's a little bit. Let's try that. Okay, remember that our y is 0. So if we actually change the bounds here so that the y wasn't 0, those numbers would move up. So you'll have to do a little bit of fussing with the x label and y label. So to do y label, change it to y label. Our topmost value is 1. So if we type 0 and then our values of 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 1. We see that we forgot to put 0.75. Let's go ahead and put that in. And now we'll need to create an x offset to position these numbers off of the y-axis. Try negative point. 075. Uh, try something a little larger. Okay, let's see if we can get everything in view. So now we've added some visual information to this particular array, and it's a little more meaningful to us in that we can take a look at the line and see where its boundaries are. So what we're using now are decimals that are using some scaling to get MIDI notes, but we could actually just type MIDI notes into this particular um, array. So we'll create a new message and hit semicolon pitches underscore two and then type our pitches 61, 62, 66, 
68. Um, let's see, how about 66 and 71. Now, if I were to send these messages, watch the array. Oh, I forgot one critical detail, which is I have to say where to start, which is at, it's at index 0. So that's why nothing sent earlier, because it was trying to send at index 61, and there is no index 61. Now watch. So what's happened is we've graphed beyond the bounds of the array. No problem. We'll change the bounds so that the leftmost is 0, the topmost is 72. The rightmost is 5 because there are still 6 indexes. And the bottommost is 0. Now when we do this you're going to see some bunching up here on the left and right. And that bunching up is essentially all of those small y ticks because they're um, 0.125 apart. So now let's change the distance of those to 10. Okay, much more manageable. And then we'll change the y labels to be at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Okay, so now we actually have our um, graph displaying values greater than 1. But if we were to run this, the scaling would produce pitches outside of MIDI range, so we just need to delete that and connect the output of tab read straight into make note. So as you can see, arrays and tables offer you a great amount of flexibility in order to use large amounts of numbers and read them back. And you can create different kinds of visual modifiers that help you to quickly identify uh, the values in the table or array.